What, what is this all about? The House just passed legislation to make the District of Columbia a new state. I can promise you in the founding of this nation, nobody envisioned that would happen. In the Constitution and the Residence Act of 1790, uh, they designated the District of Columbia to be the seat of federal authority, neutral in nature, where no state would have undue influence on the operation of the federal government. And uh, to the argument that people in D.C. are disenfranchised, it would be very easily for Maryland to give them the ability to participate in national politics if they wanted to be part of Maryland. I think in the 1830s and 1840s, part of D.C. was ceded back to Virginia under that concept. So this is not about voting. Uh, this is about altering the makeup of the House and the Senate. This is a continuation of efforts by the Democrats to alter the way America operates. From packing the court, to doing away with the uh, legislative filibuster, I can go on and on and on about the desire to reshape the political balance in this country. I can promise you this, from a South Carolina point of view, this is not a good deal for us. Being two of 50 is better than being two of 52. This would dilute South Carolina's uh, say in the United States Senate, and it would empower the most radical since I've been up here. So I hope that Senator McConnell would allow a vote on this. All of us need to be on the record. I think it's patently unconstitutional to change the nature of District of Columbia to a new state. I think it is a bad deal for the country, and it's driven by power. Turn it over to Senator Daines here, but Kavanaugh was about power. They tried to ruin a good man's life to keep the seat open past the 2020 election. Myron Kagan, and I can't believe what I'm witnessing. I thought Brett Kavanaugh was as qualified as so did Myron Kagan. The point is, that you see a effort by the most radical elements of the Democratic Party to reshape the country, reshape the Senate, reshape the House, destroy policing as we know it. This is a fight worth having. Uh, I want every senator to be on record. And again, I'll end where I started from a South Carolina point of view. This is a very bad deal. It dilutes our influence in the Senate. It empowers an agenda that I think over time will destroy this country. Senator Daines. Thanks, Senator Graham. We can sum this up in three points. This is all about, number one, a total power grab. This is about the Democrats, radical progressives, trying to change the very makeup of Congress, and specifically the United States Senate. Second, this is a, another demonstration of Nancy Pelosi and Washington, D.C., at its worst. The last thing, the last thing we should be doing is giving Washington, D.C. more power. You get outside the Beltway and the craziness here of Washington, D.C., the American people agree with us. In 2019, Gallup polled this. 64% of the American people did not want to see D.C. statehood. Only 29% supported it. And sometimes I think it's important for senators and congressmen, in fact, most of the time, get out of this city, go out to where the real people are at across our country and ask them what they think. They see this as a power grab, and they see this as Pelosi in D.C. at its worst. Lastly, it's unconstitutional. Pretty important issue, unconstitutional. The three senators standing here on this podium today all took a vow, an oath, to uphold the Constitution. This bill that the House that the House has and passed is unconstitutional. You cannot skirt the Constitution. That's a very important fundamental point, and it's why we oppose what's going on right now in the U.S. House. And Senator Cotton's been one of the real leaders on on defining this issue, so Senator Cotton. Washington, D.C. is a city, it's not a state. Washington, D.C. was designed to be a city by our founding fathers for a reason, to ensure that the seat of government was safe and secure and could continue the business of the American people. This is not an abstract or a hypothetical concern. In 1783, hundreds of soldiers mutinied against the Congress in Philadelphia where it then sat. 
The governor of Pennsylvania refused to send out the militia. The Congress had to flee to New Jersey. That was only five years before James Madison explained why we have a federal city, a city that is under federal authority, whose institutions can be protected by federal authority. Now, you may say that's an old, outdated, old-fashioned concern. We don't face mutinies anymore. I would remind everyone that there was literally rioting in the streets one block away from the White House and the Department of the Treasury and the Department of Commerce just last month. What did it take to stop that rioting? The D.C. National Guard, which is under the control of the Department of Defense, and federal law enforcement agencies. That's why we have a federal city, to ensure the safety, the security, and the continuity of operations of our federal institutions. But look what the House Democrats would do. Look at this ridiculous map. The new seat of government would have 90 sides, a 90-sided gerrymandered seat of government, which in many places would be narrower than a city block. Can continuity of our operations of the federal government be secure here? Where would it get its power? Where would it get its water? Where would it get its communications? Surrounded by a state, which is a city that would become a state that right now is governed by a mayor who obviously hates the president. These are the reasons why we have a federal city. These are the reasons why it creates constitutional problems under the original Constitution, as Senator Bain said. But there's another constitutional problem. There's the 23rd Amendment which grant three electoral votes to the seat of government, not to Washington, D.C., but to the seat of government. Now, the House Democrats know that that's a problem. Their bill says that they'll provide for expedited repeal of the 23rd Amendment if it passes. We've only amended our Constitution on 18 occasions, though, so it's not like that's a walk in the park. And in the meantime, look at that map. There is one place, one place on that map where American citizens reside, up there at the top at the White House. That means the President and the First Lady need only change their voter registration from Florida to Washington, D.C., and they would then control their very own three electoral votes. I cannot imagine that that's what Nancy Pelosi and the House of Democrats had in mind. That is why this proposal is plainly nothing but a Democratic power grab. Washington, D.C. consistently has the highest share of Democratic votes in our electoral college. The Democrats are angry that the American people have not given them total control of the government for going on a decade now. So as Senator Graham said, they want to stack the rules of our democracy. They want to give the Democratic Party two Democratic senators in perpetuity. How do we know that? Because as Senator Graham said, if this was just about voting rights, if this was just about representation in the House and the Senate, you could use this map. You could make some practical accommodations for the security and the safety of our federal institutions and retrocede the entire residential part of Washington, D.C. back to Maryland. That's exactly what we did in the 1840s with Arlington and Alexandria, which were then part of the district. They would have representation in the House. In fact, it would probably be their own congressmen, because it's about the size of a congressional district these days. They would be represented by two Democratic senators, Ben Cardin and Chris Van Hollen. But the Democrats don't want another seat in the House. They want two seats in perpetuity in the United States Senate because they can't win a majority here by the ordinary rules of the road in every election. And they haven't won one for the last six elections. That's why we should have a vote on this. We should have a vote on this piece of legislation. We should know where every senator wants to stand. Every candidate for Senate should say where they stand. I can't imagine that John Tester or Steve Bullock would want to dilute Montana's vote and voice in the United States Senate. The one place in our society where a small state like Montana or a small state like Arkansas, or a smaller state like South Carolina can speak with a voice that is equal to giant states like New York and Florida, Texas and California. Jamie Harrison should be on record too. Where does he stand on D.C. statehood? I can't imagine that these senators from smaller states, for all the reasons I've laid out, would want to dilute the voice of their states. But we should have a vote here. And everybody running for Senate all around the country should speak down as well where they stand on this. Senator Graham, I'll turn over to you to start Thank questions. you. Thank you. Well said, Tom. Questions? Two questions for Senator Cotton. You talk about this as a Democratic Senate seats in perpetuity. That seems to take a pretty pessimistic view of Republicans' ability to ever win over the kinds of voters, the actual people who live in Washington, D.C. Well, I, I will admit that Republicans don't do well with members of the media 
and with bureaucrats and lobbyists. I'll, I'll only respect, respect, that's a ridiculous mischaracterization of the people who live in Washington, D.C. I, I would suggest that Washington, D.C. is a federal city. It is the seat of the federal government. The main thing that contributes to our national economy is influence peddling, regulations, and no offense, tweeting by reporters. What do you say to the waiters and the construction workers who live here? It's a 47% black city. It's a majority minority city. Are you saying all those people, their votes don't, shouldn't matter? They shouldn't have uh, representation? I'm saying that for all the reasons I laid out, Washington is a federal city and should remain a federal city. Can I say something about that? Sure. Yeah. I live in South Carolina. We have an African-American senator. 31% of my state is African-American. Tim Scott won big in South Carolina, so I don't buy this line of reading. This is nothing to do with race. It's all to do about power. Yeah, I think Tim Scott's going to break through, along with the rest of us, I hope, to grow the vote. But this is not about growing the vote among minorities. The Republican challenge, and it is our challenge. This is about changing the Constitution in a way to give Democrats more power to enact a radical agenda that will not sell unless they can somehow find ways to get new people into the Senate. Because we're not buying what they're selling, and this idea of transforming the District of Columbia into a separate state is all about political power. So would you support the rescission of those 700,000 people in D.C.? So I, I personally think the founders were right. We should have a federal city because we need to have federal certainty over the institutions of our federal government. We don't need a city under under the control and wholly dependent on another state, whatever that state may be, a new state of Washington or the state of Maryland, which has a Republican governor, for its power, for its water, for its communications, for its National Guard. Now, I, I think it, an obvious compromise here to address some of the concerns that Senator Graham slayed out is to debate retrocession. Repeal the 23rd Amendment, and then retrocede the residential parts of Washington to Maryland. That would be an obvious compromise. The Democrats reject it out of hand. Why? Because they don't want representation in Congress under those terms. They want two Democratic senators. Uh, do you think that the city of Washington is unable to economically manage its uh, operations? And what do you think about the fact that um, the mayor, as you know, I'm sure after your news conference will push back and say that she needs to have the power over the uh, Metropolitan Police Department, for example, when they respond to things. Uh, do you think that the, the federal government should always have control over law enforcement in Washington? I think the whole idea of having a District of Columbia to be the seat of our federal government that is uh, not influenced by one single state makes sense. This enclave here is 10 miles in the, con the people thought about this who wrote the Constitution. We Federalist 47. They had an experience, as Tom indicated, in New York, and they said, how can we secure the federal government's ability to operate without dependency? And this is what we came up with. So the Democratic Party is changing this construct to get two more seats in the Senate. If you don't see that, you really are blind politically. Thanks, something. Yeah. So, yeah, I just want to address this point. Uh, it, it's not really about the quality of the governance yeah. uh, of the D.C. city government. That has obviously ebbed and flowed over the years, just like it has in cities in our states or our own state governments as well. Um, it's not about whether the D.C. city government, you know, can meet its budget, can pick up trash, fill in potholes, do street lights and all the other things that city governments everywhere has to do. It is about the unique federal oh, yeah. nature of, our, of this city. It is about the safety and security and the continuity of operations of our federal institutions. That little rump of a seat of government does not ensure that our federal institutions can continue safely, securely, and have continuous operations. Senator, to that point, I mean, the federal government doesn't control water, power, or communications in the city of this. Are you suggesting that perhaps the federal government should have its own water? The, the, fed, the federal government has to have the ability to control all those vital systems. It, it has contractual obligations, though, which we don't know what would happen under this under its makeup. It also has to have control of things like the National Guard. Remember, it was the National Guard that helped stop the rioting last month. That would no longer be the case. Look at the map again. Look at the borders of this. They're all within a street of places like the White House, the Capitol, the Supreme Court building. 
other vital places. Can I ask a bit about the NDAA? Last night, the president tweeted he would veto. If yeah, I don't. We'll talk about that on the side. I have another stated question, if you don't mind. Half your argument's fairly DC specific. The other half is about influence of your states. If the number of states expanded, do you believe then there should be absolutely no additional other states should ever be considered? I mean, we talk about Puerto Rico occasionally. There are other no, territories no, that you know this kind of. No, rise no. Occasion. I'm I'm just saying that there's a way to admit a state into the union. And that may happen one day. I'm saying that they thought about this problem when they set up the federal government. That this is undoing a constitutional construct that has served this country well. In 1968, there were riots in D.C. That was a Democratic president. They called out federal troops then because of riots in the street after the killing of Dr. King. So times ebb and flow. And I'm not talking about running the District of Columbia, having a federal government mayor. I'm talking about having a relationship to the District of Columbia that would avoid what the founders was most worried about. And that's all we're talking about here. As to future state admissions, there's a process to do it. But this process about the District of Columbia is already in the Constitution. It, it, it's good to remember history too. In 1978, they tried to do this using the current process of amending the Constitution. Only 16 states approved it. So what happened is they hit a brick wall. Yeah. What they're doing right now is too cute by half. They're skirting the Constitution to achieve what their end goal here, and that's a power grab in Washington D.C. Thank you, uh, well, Senator Daines. Can I ask you about? You said the real people outside America are the people that should be listened to here. Uh, why are the 700,000 residents of D.C., 70% of whom work in the private sector, majority minority, why are they not well, the my, real my, people? My point is the bubble right here that everybody lives in. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the 70% yeah. who work in the private sector. Yeah. The way I, I'm, I'm just suggesting that perhaps there's a little different view outside of this city than there is inside this they city. They don't want representation so, in Congress? Because so like, like what I'm saying is that... Uh, is it you get outside and talk to the American people outside of Washington, D.C., residents outside of this, and they overwhelmingly oppose this idea. That's the point. Do you guys think that they shouldn't have to pay federal taxes then if they're not represented in Congress? Maybe that's one way to approach it. Well, all I'm saying is I'm willing to sit down and talk about how to empower people who live in the District of Columbia through a process that doesn't destroy the Constitution and create two Democratic seats. One would be the Maryland situation, change the 23rd Amendment. It's not, you know, I'm up here three days a week. I, I like it. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful city. Is it well run? No, but there's a lot of places not well run. It's not about the city. It's not about the people in the city. It's about a power grab. There's nothing these people won't do to change the face of the country. And we're tired of it. We're going to fight back. We fought back with Kavanaugh. We're going to make sure that Nancy Pelosi and all those who are driving her do not win the day. If a Republican had tried to do this, in like circumstances, you'd be all over us. And you should be. Thanks. Do you have insurance at the movie Yeah, and like they didn't know what it was. Yeah, I'll find it. I lost.